Welcome to the Retail Boss Podcast. I am your host, Kina, aka the Retail Boss Guru. Are you ready to learn how to retail to retire? <laughs> Listen, if you are a cosmetologist, barber, nail tech, makeup artist, salon owner, or just an entrepreneur slash business owner, then you are listening to the right broadcast today. My goal is for everyone to take something from this feast of a table that I am about to spread out just for you. Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Retail Boss Podcast. It's your girl, Kina, a.k.a. the Retail Boss. How are y'all doing out there? Listen, it has been a trying time in this world. We are in the midst of an election. We are in the midst of a second wave of the coronavirus. We are in the midst of trying to make the right decisions in our businesses during this time. We are in the midst of the holiday season. It's just a whole lot going on. But I am here to bring you guys some inspiration. I really want to inspire you. I really want you to think deeply about really trusting God because let's face it at the end of the day we know that we can't trust man man will fail us every time we can't trust the government's system who's ran by men or man um, because the government system fails us every time it's hard to trust people because people will fail you Every time. (laughs) But I'm here to let you know that God will never fail you. He will never fail you. He is a all loving God. No matter what we've done. He sacrificed his son to die on the cross for us. So that we would have the right to repent. (laughs) Have the right to get it right. Have the right to the tree of life. And. I'm just grateful. Even when you fail yourself, God still has your back. Even when you fail God, he still has your back. And he gives us chance after chance after chance after chance. So today's episode, I really want to talk to you about taking God approved risks. God approved risks. So you guys already know how this podcast works. I talk to you about business. I talk to you about uh, salon business. I talk to you about your spiritual walk with God. I give you advice. I talk about taboo topics. So if this is your first time listening to the Retail Boss Podcast, child, welcome. You are in for a treat. And what I try to do is give you guys a balance because I could not have had a successful salon business making six figures um, as a single mom doing it all by myself, raising two children that I birthed and a sister that I inherited. And I could not have done it without the grace of God on my life. I could not have done it without trusting God every step of the way, even when I was messing up. Even when I was making mistakes and even when I was taking these risks that my family members didn't even understand. It just it just all sounded and looked crazy. And I can tell you that, you know, my dad, you know, he always trusted that I would make the right decisions or I would do what was in the best interest for um, my path and my future. So. Even when things sounded really crazy and I would tell him all these different business ideas that that I had, he always just trusted that I would do the right thing. And he had my back, even if he didn't agree. 
And I was fortunate to be able to have, well, I am fortunate to be able to be able to have a dad that is so supportive. But what I can tell you guys is this road that we walk as entrepreneurs is just not easy. And I don't know how to do it any other way. Could I sit here and give you a ton of philosophies and, you know, give you all these, you know, grand ideas from people who've made millions of dollars? Let's just face it. Everyone is not going to make millions of dollars as an entrepreneur. So let's go ahead and get that out your head. Because first of all, everyone doesn't have the tact or the mentality to be able to handle that much money. So I know scripturally, if we talk about the talents, God has given us a certain amount of success that we can reach with the talents that he's given us. So everyone's talent is different. Everyone's bag is going to be different. And I think a lot of times we get consumed with what we see on social media with, you know, million dollar stylists, six figure stylists, this, this, that. And, you know, guys, let's just deal with where we are. And goaling yourself to reach a certain plateau. And if that's where God wants you to be, if that's where, you know, the next stage of your life is supposed to go, it will happen. It will, it will just happen. You'll meet the right people. You'll make the right decisions. Um, you'll make the right connections. You'll build the right business relationships. Um, you'll invest in the right things and you'll, and the success will, it will manifest. But I got to bring us back and our thinking to really trusting God. So I just want to share with you guys this experience that I had uh, about a month ago. And I meant to share this, but somehow I just forgot. And every time I I think about it, because the Lord kept bringing it back to my memory, like, hey, you got to share this. You got to share this. The next time you do a podcast, you got to share this. Or when I, you know, you do a live, you got to share that because it was such a key principle. And throughout my life and throughout my career, as I um, elevate, I'll have sometimes I'll have some of the same experiences again or similar experiences again. Um, And I'll have a lot of, of course, new experiences but for some reason, they'll always boil down to a couple of things. And I'm like, dang, I went through that test before. And I said the word test. So I need you to understand. Um, I don't care what you do in life. You're going to be tested. Whether you believe in God or not, whether you believe in karma or not, whatever your belief system is, you're going to be tested with your faith. You can have faith in anything. And I'm going to tell you something. It's amazing to me how the principles of God will work in someone's life, even when they don't serve him. How does that happen? It's like the law of reciprocity. If you grab hold and grasp a concept, a a biblical uh, concept, and you don't even know it, this may just be taught or heard or just something that you just, found out you knew or something that you just did and didn't really recognize that you were following a biblical principle. God is so gracious that he still blesses us. And one thing I can say is when you have faith and you really trust that faith, it can move mountains. And I'm talking in the spiritual aspect just really believing in your vision, really believing in the plan that you have for your business, really believing in the path that you have for success for your life. If you keep that faith going and you trust on the inside of you, like in your knower, like I know this is going to happen. Like I can feel it in my bones. I'm, I know I'm getting closer to it, but you don't see it manifested yet. 
the more you believe and the more you have faith in that thing, your vision grows and it that vision pulls you closer to that destiny. So I had this experience and this is a little, it's not off topic, but I'm going I'm to bring it back full circle. So I had this experience and I was working out. And if you guys follow my Instagram stories, I'm always posting um, my fitness stuff in there and things that I'm eating and, you know, how I've changed or, you know, I'm changing my way of life. Um, these This age of 43, yeah, has thrown your girl a curveball. So I don't have no choice but to get my whole life together. So I was exercising and before I went to uh, I was going to exercise with my boot thing. And before we started exercising, um, he was doing something. And I was like, okay, well, I'm going to take this pre-workout and I'm going to go walk and, you know, get ready to work out because that thing takes like 15 minutes to kick in. So I was like, I'm going to go walk real quick. I'm going to walk down the block and walk back. And so before I went outside, I you know, I got dressed or whatever. Um, I had on a bracelet. And normally I take off my jewelry before I work out or whatever. But for some reason, I still had the bracelet on. I'm not going to sit here and lie. The bracelet was acting kind of janky, meaning every now and then it would like fall off my wrist. But for some reason in my mind, I was justifying maybe I didn't put it on right. Maybe I didn't close the clasp all the way. I was saying all these things, but in all actuality, it was janky. So I was in my closet. I remember being in my closet, putting on my clothes, went outside for that walk came back we worked out I recorded before we started working out I recorded like a post that I put on my Instagram stories and then I recorded us working out and I went to take a shower and I was like dang where's my bracelet so my bracelet is now like totally AWOL gone I don't know where it's at so the first thing in my mind I was like oh my god it must have fell off when I went for the walk So because I'm just who I am, I remembered, hey, you did a video. Look at the video because the video, you'll be able to tell like if you had it on before the walk or after the walk. So I look at the video and I'm like, dang, I didn't have the bracelet on. I didn't have the bracelet on after we worked out and I didn't have the brace. I couldn't tell if I had the bracelet on in the first video because that particular arm wasn't showing So all I knew is after the workout, that video, there was no bracelet. So the one before it, I couldn't tell because I didn't have the arm up. The second video we had worked out, I definitely didn't see it. So I'm still in limbo about thinking about like, when did the bracelet fall off? So I had, like I said, I had taken the shower. So I was like, I'm going to walk back through the path where I, you know, took the walk before I started working out. It's got to be out there. And not even a quarter, listen, listen to this, y'all, not even a quarter of the way down the block, I hear Holy Spirit tell me your bracelet is in the house. And I know y'all thinking, what, like, how do you just hear a voice in your head? So let me explain. So as a believer of Christ, you have the right to obtain the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a gift that Jesus left to us on the earth to be a comforter, to be a helper, to be a guide for us. Because why? He died. He went back to heaven. He left us this Holy Spirit that if you want this thing, if you want this gift, you can obtain it. All you got to do is ask him for it. Okay. So the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of me, right? And the Holy Spirit is a representation of God in heaven as well, okay? So if you want to go with the Trinity, then you understand Holy Spirit, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, okay? So now Holy Spirit says, your bracelet is in the house. And I'm like, um, no, it can't be. It, I'm going to keep walking. I get halfway. Holy Spirit says, your bracelet ain't out here. <laughs> and mind you, when Holy Spirit speaks to you, he uses your own voice in your own head. And some people, people who don't believe in um, the Holy Spirit at all, they call that, oh, that's just your conscience speaking. But I need you to understand that we are made up of three parts. We are human beings that we have a physical body that possesses a soul and possesses a spirit. 
Okay. So your spirit is what's supposed to be connected to God. So anyway, Holy Spirit is telling me, girl, your bracelet ain't out here. I did not trust that voice. And I kept walking like now I'm busting out in the sweat. Mind you, I just took a shower. So I'm feeling some type of way. I'm hot. I'm sweating. The sun beaming down on me. People looking at me like, dang, what's she looking for? I walk all the way down, come all the way back. And I'm feeling defeated. Listen to this now. These emotions. Because I didn't listen to Holy Spirit telling me the bracelet wasn't out there. I'm now, first of all, I done exhausted myself. I'm hot. So I'm taking myself through something that I don't even really have to go through. But I didn't trust the still voice on the inside of me over something small like this is something small like when there's like a big situation going on in my life and I hear Holy Spirit I listen but this was so small and minute okay y'all following I get back to my house and I'm feeling I'm 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 upset with myself I'm feeling defeated I just gotten that bracelet for my birthday like I'm just upset And so I go in my bedroom and I sit down on my bed and I said, Lord, I need you to help me find this bracelet. I really need you to help me find this bracelet. And you know what Holy Spirit said back to me? If you would have just waited for me to give you instructions, you wouldn't have gone through all the things that you've gone through. So now you need to wait. And I sat on that bed and I sat on that bed for about 10 minutes And all of a sudden, Holy Spirit says, go in your closet, (laughs) dump out your dirty clothes basket. So I dump out my dirty clothes basket and there was the bracelet at the bottom of all those clothes. And see what had happened was (laughs) when I was in the closet getting dressed, I had put some things in my dirty clothes hamper. So when I guess maybe reaching in the back, the bracelet just came off. And so now I'm out the closet. I'm like happy because I got the bracelet. But then in the same moment, I was like, oh, I failed the test. I failed the test of my faith. I failed the test of trusting God. And you may be thinking, why are you being so deep? I don't really get it. This is this is what I got from that. I don't care how big or how small the situation is. Either you're going to trust God or you're not. You have to make an ultimate decision that even when your your soul, which is your thinker, which is the human side of you, is telling you one thing. And the Holy Spirit is over here telling you another thing, which nine times out of 10 is contrary. It's opposite. But you're saying, but my mind is saying I got to backtrack because that's what I, if I ever lose something, that's the norm. So in that moment, I had a choice. Either you're going to follow your soul or you're going to listen to your spirit. And it was so small and minute, but I got such a great, understanding and 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 here I'm here to let you know I'm gonna have to go through this test again because that's just how God works he wants to make sure that you you get the lesson so then he can elevate you to the next level and I'm like there can be some big things ahead of me and I will trust God to the end I'm speaking I'm I'm uh, confessing, I'm blessing God, I'm praising God, I'm giving him thanks. It ain't even happened yet. It ain't even manifested yet. Like I've been down to the wire and needed something. And it has happened right before the time I needed it. God would bless me with it. Boom. Because I trusted him. I trusted that his word would not lie. I trusted that when I go to my father, because to us, remember, if you're a believer, You go to God as father. He is father. God to the world is God. Like they say God. We say father when we address him. So when I go to my father, I'm like, you're Lord of my life. 
You are my father. I know that anything that I come to you with, anything that I ask you for, if it lines up with your word, it belongs to me. So, yeah, I I had a moment and I was like, wow, just like I trust God with the big stuff, I got to learn how to trust him with the little stuff. I didn't realize that that area in my life was lacking, like little things that the smallest things that I would, I would literally lean to my own understanding because you know what you know. Like, I know what I know. So in that, that moment, I recognized, girl, no, you don't. You don't know what you know. What you think you know, you really don't know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, God got you, and you got to trust him with everything. So, yeah, that was a huge lesson for me. So I just I had to share that with you guys, because sometimes we don't think about the small things and we will still be led by our own understanding and then we'll miss the mark. And it was just fortunate that I had to stop and wait. That's the other thing. When we go to God and we ask him for help, you have to stop and you have to wait for instruction. You can't just start moving because then you'll miss it. You'll miss it and you'll miss him because, you know, then he's like, well, I mean, I guess she busy. She going to do her own thing. So, hey, she ain't wait on me. So I just got to let her do what she do. And I guess she going to have to come back and try to pass this test later. Another time we're going to do this again. She didn't get it. And and I'm not in the business to have to be taking tests over and over and over. I need to pass these tests. You feel me? So, yes, guys. In that moment, I learned, I was like, wow, God, I trust you with the big stuff. But when it comes to the little things, I'm still leaning to my own understanding. So, Father, I repent. I repent of my sin. Lord, help me get it together. Because I don't have time to be wasting time. I don't have time to get physically uncomfortable. I don't have time to start having all these emotions of feeling like I'm defeated and I lost something and I went through a whole thing for no, for like 20, 30 minutes for nothing. And how stupid do you feel after the fact? Like I felt really stupid. (laughs) And I was like, man, the Lord was like, but you're going to have to go through this test again. I need you to get this and I need you to get this right because I need you to be able to teach somebody else that they're going to have to learn to trust me with the small as well as they do with the large. So guys, if you got something out of that, I'm going to need you to take notes and pass your tests. And, you know, that really takes me into um, risk taking because, you know, when we have these businesses, it's like you go through so many challenges and you have to take some risks. And it's like right now with all this going on with COVID, I don't know what I should do. Should I keep my salon open? Should I close my salon again? You know, like, what should I do with the employees? Like, it's it's like you're going to have to take a risk and do some things that you you really might not be sure of. So it's like, okay, I got to go to the Father with this. Like, Lord, I need to know what risks I need to take and what I don't need, what risks I don't need to take. Because you may have to start another business. You may have to take a chunk of money and invest it into starting an online business so that you can make money if you have to close your establishment. Because as a salon owner or as a booth renter or as a salon suite owner, wherever you fit, if they shut down the salons again, we can't work. If you don't work, you don't eat. If you don't eat, you can't pay your bills. You can't, you know, you can't live. You can't do any of those things. And I know a lot of us, and I'm speaking as a majority, a lot of us applied for these loans and we got this money. And I would hope that some of y'all still got some money left. Like I'm going to put some, I'm going to take half of this and put it to the side because I don't know what might come later. And the other half get caught up on everything that fell behind for those six months. And it's just like, okay, here we go again. I need to figure out a calculated risk that I need to take to keep money flowing into the business. And I'm telling you guys, a lot of people started online businesses because it was easy to sell their product. You don't have to sit in front of the customer. 
Your marketing basically sells the product for you. you. Use all these different platforms to promote and push your product. And it's like instant sales, honestly. So if you're going to pursue your God given potential, you're going to have to, you're going to find yourself in situations and you're going to face opportunities that require some decisions and actions that you're going to have to make. It's, it just is what it is. You cannot run from that. And some of those decisions and actions may appear really risky to you, but your potential is the sum of all the possibilities that God has for your life. You have the potential on the inside of you to start another business. If you have the skill, if you have the training, if you have the know-how, if God gave you a vision, you have that potential to make those things happen. And I'm going to tell you guys something. When stuff starts getting shifty and shaky, you got to make a move. And you can't wait to the last minute to make a move. Like right now, and I'm just, hear me out. Right now is a really good time. And I'm not telling you got to do this, but it's a really good time for you to start an online retail store. Why? Because we are getting ready to hit Black Friday. People are willing to buy things from people they don't know at all. All your product has to do is show up. Show up on an e-commerce site. Show up on an Amazon store. Show up on Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook. All your store has to do is show up. So... It's a really great time in the retail space for you to make money. And I'm not saying just throw something together and then put it out there. Of course, it takes some planning. It takes some some thinking. But if you've already been thinking about this or if you're already a salon owner and you're like, you know, we do sell salon retail product. We sell, you know, hair products. We sell makeup products. We, we sell skincare products. I need you to think ahead of the game. This is a great time for you to build a new customer base because your clients come into the salon, but you need a customer base that will never come into your salon, that will find you on social media, will find you on an e-commerce shopping site, will find you. So in order for that to happen, you got to get in the market. In order for you to get in the market, you got to take a risk. A risk meaning I need to find an e-commerce website that I can sell this product even if we're not able to be in a salon at all. I need to still be able to move this product, okay? Move this product and continue to buy inventory and make a profit. So that means you got to take a calculated risk. So now I have to educate myself. So I need to start finding some of these e-commerce websites, to use so that I can get my product out there. So I'm just saying to you guys, it's a good time for you really for you to really sit back, evaluate what's going on in your business, and then ask God for instructions because you're going to have to take some risky risks. And when God says, do this, take that step forward, do this, do that. He's always going to make good on his promise for his children. And you're like, you might be thinking like, well, how will I know God is telling me to do it? Sometimes you'll just know in your spirit, in your knower, it will feel right. Okay. It will just feel right. And the more you research and find information and you become knowledgeable And you start taking the first step. The first thing you got to do is take the first step. When you take the first step, God will start taking the rest. But a lot of us operate in fear because we don't trust God. (laughs) We scared we're going to miss out on something, right? I was scared I was going to miss out on not finding the bracelet. And I wanted to trace my steps because that's what I knew to do. So a lot of you are in salon businesses, and this is what you know to do. Sell product in my shop, service clients. This is what I know to do. What about doing what you don't know to do? When are you going to take that risk? Because half of y'all are not even using your salon software 
to to uh, send out email marketing to sell your products to your clients that maybe don't come in the shop as often. You know what I'm saying? Or even to the clients that come in often, send, sending out some type of education on your retail product that will draw them to go on your website and click and pay. We got to stop being lazy. We got to really tap in to what is going on right now in the marketplace. If you are listening to this podcast and you're in the marketplace, that means you have a product. You need to find multiple ways to sell that one product. (coughs) Excuse me. So that means if I have four or five different platforms that I'm on selling my product, that's more exposure. So being stuck, just selling my products on my website is not going to kick it, sis, my brother. It's that's that's not that's not going to kick it. People go to your website for information. People go to your booking sites to book appointments. People go there just to look, to look at your gallery, see it, look at your prices. And yes, they may see retail. But majority of your retail sales is not going to come from that. Majority of your retail sales is going to come from e-commerce. It's going to come from social media ads, pushing your product. You got to get it in the flow of the marketplace. You got to get your business in the algorithm. And the more your business gets in that algorithm, because you're constantly adding your business to different platforms listen you'll start to see them sales bing 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 hitting your phone like nobody's business so we gotta ask god lord help me figure out what risks i need to take right now at this time because you guys gotta prepare yourself for what's coming so that means if right now the time is hot get in the flow of what is popping People are shopping. I'm telling you, don't try to count folks pocketbooks and think, well, it's COVID. So people really aren't spending money like that. That's a lie. That's a lie. I'm going to tell you why. (laughs) Every time Fashion Nova sends me a alert to my phone about a 40% off sale, I go looking. With no intentions on shopping. But because it's a 40% off coupon. Now an item that might've been $80, I'm willing to buy it because I'm going to get 40% off. So why not? So now I'm putting stuff in my buggy so that I can see what my total comes up to with no intentions on shopping. Now I'm looking like, dang, with the discount, I'm only spending $120. I could do that. That's how that happens, guys. But if you're not using text marketing, (laughs) And it's like, okay, how do I use text marketing? Let me tell you guys something. All of these email marketing sites, you got, I'm going to throw out MailChimp. You, it's so many. You can get, sign up for text marketing as a piece of their marketing software you want to use. And now you have the ability to have a capture page. You build a capture page. You put it on your social media People see your product on your page. Now they go click the capture page. The capture page says put in your email and telephone number. Now you done capture the email and telephone number. Now you can text them and email market them. Guys, it's not rocket science. But are you willing to risk searching for the information? Are you willing to risk asking God, what is it that I need to do? It may cost me a couple of dollars. And, and guess what? It, that's just what it is. It's going to cost you something. You can't get something from nothing. You got to put something in the pot. So, yes, you may have to pay for this service. This service may cost me $29 a month or whatever. It, uh, it may cost me this. It may cost me that. But the return back on my investment, my ROI, it's going to supersede that quickly. And I'm just like, what is really going on out here? Like, guys, we got to tap into this right now. And I'm going to tell you straight up, it's a significant amount of risk involved in trusting God in all things, okay? Relationships, choices, decisions, risk after risk after risk. But 
it's a part of the very nature of faith. So if you don't have no faith in anything, how can you possibly expect for something to happen if you don't believe in it? And when you believe in it, you got to trust that instinct. Got to trust that. Got to trust that feeling in your gut that's telling you, this is what I need to do to keep my business afloat because this thing about to hit again. And people are home. They ain't got nothing to do but be on their phones, scrolling on the internet. So if your business isn't visible, how do you expect to make money? How do you expect to make money? So yes, you're going to have to take some risk. And guess what? You take a lot of risk when, when trusting God. You're putting your belief in a God whom you cannot see, but you still experience. We put our faith in his promises to work all things to our benefit, even when we can't understand what must occur to get us from where we are to where we hope to be. We take a risk in putting our faith in the love of God to transform us in ways we can't even begin to imagine or expect. But guess what? You ain't the only one. You're not the only one. This has been going on since the beginning of time. Okay, so let me take y'all back. Let me take y'all to the word. Let me remind you of one of the greatest risk takers of all times. Okay. So after Jesus multiplied the five loaves and the two fish, we know the story. He fed 5,000 people. Okay. So that day was drawing to a close end when he told his disciples, get into a boat and let's go to the other side of the sea of Galilee. Okay. So why did they do this? Because, Jesus went up on the mountain to pray by himself after performing this miracle. He, he needed time for himself. And and that happens sometimes after you've done all this stuff. (laughs) Okay. I need y'all to really track with me after you've done all the things that you know how to do. And there's been blessings in your business and these things are working. And now it's like, okay, I need a moment. Because I need to collect myself. I need to collect my thoughts. And I need to spend some time with God before I move forward. Because there's some other things that I'm going to have to do. And I don't really know how I'm going to do them. You know? And I need you guys to think about it this way. Because remember, Jesus was God in human form. There was no man worthy enough to be the sacrificial lamb. So God says, you know what? Boom. I'm going to send my son, Jesus, which is me wrapped in human flesh. I'm going to come to the earth and I'm going to be the ultimate sacrifice. But I need you to understand Jesus was in human form. So he had feelings. He had emotions. He went through stuff just like you. Okay. So after some time had passed, Jesus was still on the mountain while the boat was being going back and forth. In the middle of the in the middle of the ocean because it was a storm coming. So now the boat is being tossed to and fro. Boom, boom, boom. The disciples, they they on there and they like, what is going on? <laughs> you know, when the storm comes, you be sitting back like, what the heck is going on? Okay. So the disciples, and if you guys want to read this story, you can go to Matthew 14 and 25. Right? Um Yes, Matthew 14 and 25. So the disciples, they was they were upset. They were in fear. They were like, okay, we out here because Jesus is on the mountain. We can't just dip. We can't just leave him. And so now they're, they're crying. They're scared. And all of a sudden, they see this ghost walking on the water. And they're like, now this looked like Jesus. But no human can walk on water. So this is a ghost. So (laughs) I need y'all to understand that, you know, Jesus was God in human form. So if he wanted to translate himself into being spirit, he can do that because he was the all knowing guy. He could do anything. Okay. So they see this quote unquote ghost walking on the water and Jesus immediately spoke to them, commanded them not to be afraid. And the scriptures say it was Peter who answered Jesus saying, Lord, if it is you command me to come to you on the water. 
And Jesus bid Peter to come. I'm in Matthew 14 and 28 now. And Jesus bid Peter to come. Peter stepped out of the boat and walked on the water to go to Jesus. Out of all of the disciples in the boat that day, only one risked everything to step out on faith. Becoming the only person in the Bible who walked on water. Peter was willing to leave the boat and begin his walk towards Jesus. Would you have been willing to take that risk? I need you to think about what's going on in your life right now. Think about what's going on in your business right now. Are you willing? If the Lord speaks to you and says, this is what you need to do. I need you to create an e-commerce website. I need you to take this class. You listening to the retail boss. She did a retail bank class. I'm just throwing stuff out there. And he spoke into your heart and said, you need to get this information so that you can move forward. And it might take you investing some money. Are you willing to risk that so that you can get what I have for you? Or are we going to sit back and operate in fear? So would you have been willing to take that risk, that same risk that Peter did back then to walk on the water, which has had never been done. <laughs> and I'm gonna tell you straight up. I believe that experience deep in Peter's faith and made him willing. It, it made him willing to take a risk probably greater than he had ever taken before in his life. And now later on in his life, he can reflect back on that and having to take risks again, over and over again in ministry as a minister of the gospel. It was just like, if I could do that, I could do anything. It did nothing but set him up for the rest of his destiny for the rest of his success for the rest of his life, that experience. So are you willing to take a risk that God is telling you with your business, are you willing to trust him? Are you willing to have faith in what he has shown you either in a vision or he's talked to you and you wrote it down and you made a plan? Are you willing to take that risk? Are you willing to seek God for instructions on taking that risk? And I'm going to tell you something. A lot of times uh, we could see a, a risk as a, a, a we, we could see it as a scary moment. But if you see it as a risk from our perspective of I'm trying to reach a level of success, it could be the very situation that God uses to strengthen your faith and push you closer to your destiny. I'm serious. So it's like, it's, it's how you think about these things that we go through and we experience as business owners. And I don't want you guys to walk in the spirit of fear. Now that they say we got another, you know, wave of COVID coming back in. Don't let the media mess up your mind. Don't let the media mess up your money. Because when we decide in our mind that we're going to play into the narrative of woo woo there's getting ready to be another shutdown and you immediately in your mind start activating fear oh my god what am I gonna do if they say we can't go in this, to the salon oh my god I, I won't be able to pay my rent oh my god I'm gonna lose this I'm gonna lose that versus saying okay this is what they said I'm not putting my faith in what they're saying. I'm not saying it's, it's going to happen or it's not going to happen. But what I'm not going to do is be driven by that. But what I am going to do is be smart. And I'm going to pray. And I'm going to ask God, Lord, give me instructions on what I need to do to prepare my business. Because I know I'm going to have to take some risk. And I got to trust you with this. I don't know what to do. But I know you're going to give me the right answer. I know you're going to give me clear answers precise instructions so I'm open to hearing you I'm opening to listening I'm opening to paying attention to the signs that you've given me my spirit is open to receive and that's what God wants when your spirit is open to receive he will then begin to pour you out a download from heaven and when you get that download from heaven he will lead you exactly where you need to be you know how many times I prayed about 
situations and I would just out the blue, let me pick up my computer. I might've been going to look at something else. And then that thought hit my mind. And then I Google so-and-so and now I didn't Google so-and-so and it takes, it shows me all these resources and I start clicking on these resources. And now that thought is now turning into vision because now I can see where I could possibly go with this. And now I have to make the decision on, am I going to move forward? Am I going to, you know, let me click on this, click on that. And before you know it, you've opened it up all these resources of things that you would have never known about. But the first thing is opening your heart to receive trusting God, no matter what, and having faith in whatever vision that he gives you. That's the key. That's the, those are the keys. So, If you didn't get anything else from this today, I hope that you got the understanding of one, trusting God, two, having faith and believing, three, having to take God given risks to achieve success in my life, in my business, in my marriage, with my children. In your life. And that's it. I'm 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 not gonna hold us long. I'm 45 minutes in, so you guys already know how this goes on the podcast. You know I'm a believer of Jesus Christ. So I am going to pray for us and I'm gonna give us a scripture focus. Now I kind of already gave y'all one. Um I gave it to you a little early because I was like in the flow. So if you want to read that story about Jesus walking on the water and and Peter getting up enough faith and strength to step out of that boat. You got to step out your boat, sis. You got to step out your boat, my brother. You got to step out your boat and you got to take that risk. Okay. So if you want to read more about that story, that's going to be Matthew 14 and it starts at 22 all the way to 32, okay? So if you needed something that you needed to focus on this particular week, focus on focus on that story. Focus on that story. And I'm going to give you all a tip too. I normally read from the message translation or I read from the CEV translation. Um. There's also the spirit filled Bible translation. There's like a bunch of translations. And then you can go back and look at it in the King James version. Now I ain't going to sit here and tell you no lies. The King James version with all the thus thousand these is a little hard to understand. So I'll start backwards. Like I'll read all these other um, translations first because it breaks it down in layman's terms. And then I'll go back and read the King James version. I'm like, okay. I get it. That makes sense. So if you guys want to tie it together, all the loose ends, that's how, um, that's how I do it. So you can try doing it like that too. Okay. So in the meantime and in between time, that's your scripture focus. I've already read it and gone through it. So I'm not going to do it again, but it's time for prayer. That's right. That's right. You guys know I care so much about you and I want to pray for you that God's blessings will flow from heaven like milk and honey into your life, into your business. And we got to learn how to speak positive words of affirmation over our businesses. So if you guys don't know, I'm getting ready to let you know, um, I have a book called daily affirmations for beauty industry professionals it is on my website so you can go to www.retailbossbiz.com and if you don't know how to overcome every area of your life with positioning yourself with positive affirmations i'm gonna need you to go ahead on and get a copy it's a short book it's a really thin you could put it in your pocketbook um you could put it in your purse i said pocketbook that's kind of old school right you could put it in your your purse (laughs) it's only 37 pages and it's also a note section in the back but what i did and i'm saying this to you guys because i can only practice what i preached okay or practice what i preach but um as a salon owner for 10 years years, you know, I I got to a point in my life where I had to change the things that I was saying, because 
things would happen in the business. I would get upset and I would pray about stuff, take it back, pray, give it to God, take it back. And, you know, I, I got myself caught up in my emotions and I began to feel anxious, insecure. And even sometimes I got depressed and I was famous for quoting this right here. Every time I turn around, something is always going wrong. Something is always happening. And then one day it dawned on me that I was speaking the wrong words over my business. So I changed every negative emotion and I spoke positive affirmations over my business and once I did that things started changing almost instantaneously guys my salon business grew I had a shop full of um, employees working within the business I got to the point where we were we had a waiting list in the salon we sold um, every year my retail uh, would increase uh, to the point where we I, I actually got to $80,000 a year in selling just retail. And God did that. He gave me a formula. I applied that formula to my business and we rocked out. Okay. So this book, I promise you, will fully transform and evolve your entire business forever. So if you don't know, now you know where you can go and find that. And I'm going to take us into prayer. All right. So here we go. Lord God, I thank you for allowing every single person that is listening to the podcast today. I thank you for them, Father. It is not by chance that they found this podcast. It was by divine appointment. So, Father, I ask you to bless every person that is listening. Lord, Father, allow every word that was spoken today to pierce the hearts and the minds of every single person listening, Father. Lord, we receive your blessings that you have for us. Father, we dedicate our businesses to you so that your blessings from heaven can flow down into our life and to our businesses and every aspect of every part of our being. So, Father, I know for a fact that you didn't give us these businesses for no reason, but you wanted us to be a blessing to other people. So, Lord, every single day, load me with the benefits, load us with the benefits that we can move forward in our businesses productively, that we can be a blessing to other people that we could be a blessing to our clients, that we can be a blessing to our employees and our staff, that we can be a blessing to our families, Father. We can be a blessing to our communities, God. Lord, give us strength so that we can really trust you. Lord, we know we can't move forward in our businesses without having faith in you. So, Father, we, we tie our faith with trust, that as we have to make risks in our businesses, as you push our businesses to evolve to the next level, as you um, cover our businesses during these times in the world when things are changing, that you would cover us and you would give us instructions, Father, that we will know how to operate and move forward and do things differently. Lord, give us strategic plans. So we are just not out here doing anything. Lord, give us strategic plans. Give us strategic instructions so that we will be set up properly. Lord, and you will cover us because your word says you will not leave your children out here begging for bread but that you will bless us from your heavenly kingdom. So, Father, we ask you to open up your windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing that we will not have room enough to receive it, Father. Lord, we open our hearts to receive. We open our hearts to receive a word from you. We open our hearts to receive a prophetic word. We open our hearts to hear you speak to our spirits. We open ourselves and our spirits to read your word and get knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. And Lord, Father, because we are open, we know that we will walk in 
expectation of your word being fulfilled in our lives. Lord, you have chosen us to be business owners and we dwell in your house daily clothed in prayer and praise and thanksgiving. And Father, I thank you right now that every word that has been spoken out of my mouth, an ambassador for your kingdom, that you will allow it to come to pass with your people. And Satan, we put you on notice. You have no power over God's people. We cancel every assignment. We cause an abortion. We cause crop failure over every strategic assignment you have against God's people trying to affect our businesses. You have no power and we put you under our feet. We serve our mighty God. And through the name of Jesus Christ, we have overcome every tactic that you have planned to put before us. It will fail and it will go back to the pit of hell where it belongs. And you will eat that food. You will eat that fruit. That fruit will not manifest in our lives because you will not distract us with depression, anxiety, anxiety, stress. We come against the spirit of stress. We come against the spirit of anxiety and I come against the spirit of depression. You have no power over God's people. You have no power over God's business owners. You are defeated foe. And I put you under my feet with the mighty name of Jesus. You are defeated and you are depleted from our lives and our businesses. In Jesus name. And Lord God, we thank you for the power that you've given us, the Holy Spirit that dwells on the inside of us to speak over the enemy when he tries to attack us and he tries to come up with ways to distract us. He has no power, Father. You have all the power and you've given it to your children and we receive it. We walk in it boldly before your throne. We are your children. We are citizens of the kingdom of heaven and we are ambassadors for the kingdom of God. And Lord God, as your child, I speak boldly before your throne that this is who we are. We will believe the report of you, our Lord, not of the enemy. We will turn from those wicked ways. And Lord, we thank you. We thank you that all is well with me and my house. Y'all repeat after me. All is well with me and my house. All is well with you and your house. God got you. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. We pray. Amen. And I let me listen. Y'all, shoot, I could run up out this room right now because the spirit of the Lord is here. The spirit of the Lord is here. God loves you. No matter what you've done, no matter what you're going through, no matter what thoughts that you've had, God loves you. He will never leave you hanging. Do not soak your mind with the media. If you got to turn your phone off, if you got to go on your social media, post and get off, post and get off. Do not allow your mind. Your, I need you to understand this. Your eyes are a gate. Your ears are a gate. Your mouth is a gate. Everything that you say, every word that comes out, proceeds out of your mouth. It God hears it. He hears your words. And so does the enemy. So when you speak, Somebody asks you, how you doing? Girl, I done had better days. You know, I was so depressed yesterday. The enemy's like, yep, that's exactly what I needed her to say. Yep, that's exactly what I need to keep working on. So now he keeps playing on your mental. Because you gave him entrance through your mouth. You spoke it. And, and these gates, these other two gates, our eyes and our ears. The more you watch social media, the more you watch the media, CNN, Fox News, YouTube. The more you allow that stuff to get in your spirit, before you know it, you disturbed. You don't know why you got an attitude. You want to fight people. You want to cuss people out. You don't even know why you feeling all of this anger because of what they're, they're showing us on the media. 
over and over and over and over. They're not showing us anything. When's the last time you saw something good on the news? You ain't seen nothing good on the news lately. And my God, we're in the middle of an election. And for people that are hearing me and I'm talking from the United States and you're hearing me in other states, you know, I'm not other states, other countries. I'm sure every country got something going on. There's a principality fighting over every single country that is represented on this podcast. And we got to know as believers, we have the power to change things with our mouth. But if your mind is messed up because you're filling it with garbage versus filling it with the word of God, let me take time out my morning before I go out of my house and go to my, go into my business. Let me read a scripture. One scripture can carry you all day long. One scripture or one chapter, one passage, one story. So when I created the book, Daily Affirmations for Beauty Industry Professionals. I basically took the positive words that I spoke over my business and the scriptures, combined them together, and I gave you page after page after page. If you feel in some type of way, here's a page for that. Speaking over uh, business relationships, we're going to speak positive affirmations over that. Speaking over my finances, we're going to speak positive affirmations over that. Speaking over my marriage, we're going to speak positive affirmations over that. Because guys, I recognize it's not easy out here in these streets. I done been there, done that. I don't own a salon with six chairs. I understand how it feels to be in a salon suite and you by yourself. I know what it feels like to work in somebody's salon as a booth renter and I've outgrown the space. I know what it feels like to be on a on commission working in somebody's salon trying to make it to where I could build my clientele to where I can become my own owner. I know what that feels like to have to take the risk to get the LLC and start the business. I know what that feels like to have to invest money and take business classes so that I know how to operate my salon business properly. I know what that feels like because I did it for 20 some odd years. So as I sit before you on this podcast, it's because I've been through every single level through working my way up through this beauty industry. And now I am a brand that is an educator and I teach salon business principles. I teach retail principles to people just like yourself. And I'm going to tell you something. The road is lonely. I only have God. That's it. I only got, I only have the father to depend on. And thank God. I just thank God that he gave me a wonderful husband that truly it, he walks the spiritual walk with me. You know what I'm saying? But in the industry, I, I don't, I don't have <laughs> like I'm by, I'm literally by myself. I'm in the lane by myself. Nobody teaches retail strategies. Okay. That's fine. God put me here for a reason. That's cool. There are tons of people that teach salon business. You know, everybody teach their thing on a different level. So you got to be comfortable with what God has given you. And you got to take ownership of that. You know how many risks I've taken being a, a, a educator that is, I'm not under any brand. I don't represent any product company. I used to, I taught for the influence hair care product line for years. I taught for Paul Mitchell for years. I taught for Dudley. For years, I, I've done I've done that working with product companies. But when God told me to step out and do this thing by myself, it was a huge risk. One, are people going to listen to me? Two, are people going to buy into the vision? Three, are people going to see the value? Four, are people going to want to pay for the value that I'm putting forward because I know it's extremely valuable? I understand. And guess what? When the Lord told me to close my salon, move to Atlanta, Georgia, I did it. It was a risk, (laughs) a huge risk. You go from making six figures to zero dollars and zero cents. I did that, took that risk, moved to Atlanta, Georgia. Lord, why you brought me here? Why I'm here? I don't know nobody. I I don't have no family. I have friends. 
I don't have no family here. You know what I'm saying? Like, why would you bring me here to start me from scratch? And then the Lord tells me to teach at another Paul Mitchell school. So I went from a Paul Mitchell school in Charleston, South Carolina to now teaching at one in Roswell, Georgia. And through, and through the years of my career, I always had like two or three things going on. I always had multiple streams of income, but when God told me to take this risk, he shut it all down and was like, yeah, so I want you to go work at this school. And I'm like, why God, why Lord, why, like, why would you have me to do this? And it was because I needed, there were certain people that I needed to meet. Certain people needed to cross my path. There were certain people I was supposed to connect with. Then the Lord tells me when I get the job, the day I got the job, I got in my car and I'm like, Lord, I thank you for the job. God, you're just amazing. And the Lord says, yeah, but it's going to be short lived one year. You got one year. And I'm like, one year, one year, sis. I'm like, all right. And almost to the day. Almost to the day I left that job and started my own brand. And there's more to this story, which I think I've shared before in another podcast, but I might have to come back because I'm about to get too long winded. But I need y'all to understand that I have done what I'm telling you to do. I'm not a person that's on here feeding y'all a bunch of lies You know what I'm saying? Making everything seem like it was so grand. Like I'm not a person that ain't never been through nothing. I can't stand those type of people that come on a podcast or they go on a live and they just, everything is sunshine and roses and they never tell you the good, the bad and the ugly. And that's what I've always promised to bring y'all truth. So I need you to understand God got your back. I need you to trust him. I need you to step out on faith. Take the risk. Pay attention to what's going on in the marketplace. Start doing research. Figure out what you need to do. If you already have product to sell, only thing you need to do now is get on all these e-commerce platforms, and there's a ton of them. So what did you got product in the salon? So what? Open your Amazon store. Thing costs you, what, $150, $120, something like that. Open you an Amazon store. Sell your same retail product in your salon on Amazon. Because I'm going to tell you something. Your clients, they go on Amazon and they look for your retail product on Amazon. Why not make it more available to them? They they might not even know they're buying it from you. But see, that's how how things happen. Like, y'all got to understand, technology is what runs the world now. So if you're not willing to bend, if you're not willing to get in the flow, you're going to be lost in the sauce. You're going to be right there twiddling your thumbs. Why ain't nobody buying no products from me on my website? I did everything retail boss told me to do. No, you didn't. You ain't step out on no faith. You ain't take no risk. You got WooCommerce. You got Squarespace. You got Square. You got PayPal. You got Big Cartel. It's so many e-commerce sites. I would put my store. if If I had... If I had what y'all have, I would I would pick five platforms and I'll put my product everywhere. That's what the Kardashians did. Go on Afterpay. Who you see on there? The Kardashians. Go to their website, the Kardashians, because they have a website. Okay. But their product is on Sezzle. Their product is on Afterpay. Um, where else is their their product is everywhere? Amazon, they got an Amazon store. You put in um, Kim Kardashian's line, boom, her store comes right up. Like, so what if the people are still buying it from one particular source? So what did you find it everywhere? The more accessible you are, (laughs) the more money you will make. Because now people are like, oh, they everywhere. People are putting product on layaway. They'll buy $100 worth of hair products, put that thing on layaway, and for easy installments, they done paid it off. And I think some of these um, layaway after pay and sizzle and all them, uh, Clara, I, some of them, they even have it where you can get approved for a certain amount of money. And now you basically got their little credit card for you to be able to shop on. And then you basically pay them back. Like, y'all, 
I need you to get with it. There is no excuse why y'all not making no money. So I'm going to stop right there because I could keep preaching and I'm already over time. I just want to let you guys know I love you so much and I can't wait for you guys to join me for another episode. Y'all have an amazing day. Hey guys, it's the Retail Boss here and I wanted to give you guys some great information. If you don't know, you're getting ready to know. The Retail Boss has a tribe. That's right. You guys can subscribe for $49 a month and you will have access to at least one exclusive lesson each and every month. Along with those lessons are going to come downloadable cheat sheets, checklists, guides, ebooks, and so much more, guys. I designed this to better ensure long term success for your future as a salon business owner. With all that being said, you also get exclusive discounts on any live courses as a member. I'll also be giving you guys a secret pop up masterclass just for the Retail Boss Tribe every quarter. So you'll be added to my Facebook group so that you will be a part of those live pop-up masterclass courses, okay? This is only for exclusive members, okay? So I'm telling you guys, there's going to be special invitations and opportunities and so much more for your education that it's just not even funny. So in this community group on Facebook, you will be added to and there will be a lot of information I'll be posting in that group every single week. So not only are you going to get these classes every month and not only are you going to get these downloadable guides to help you along the way, not only are you getting ebooks, not only are you getting discounts on classes because you're a member, not only are you getting a master class with me every single quarter, quarter, but you will have the opportunity of a lifetime to have this subscription going on as long as you want to be a part of it for $49. Because I'm telling you right now, come 2021, this price is getting ready to go up. So right now is the time for you to subscribe, get in the mix, because I'm telling you right now, the group is growing and this educational platform is blowing up. So many people have become successful in their retail business and their salon business by being a part of the Retail Boss Tribe. And guess what? The tribe holds you down. So in that exclusive Facebook group, everybody's posting in there. You'll get advice from other people. You'll get to see what other people are doing in their businesses as well because we share in this community group, okay? All right, so I'm getting ready to go. I just wanted to drop you guys a line. Make sure you click the link down in the show notes. That way you know exactly where to go. When you click that link, it's going to take you directly to the site. You put your card number in, you become a part of the tribe, and it's on and popping from there, okay? All right, guys, I'll talk to you soon. Thank you guys so much for being a part of the podcast, and I love you guys, and I'm praying for you. Talk to you soon. Thank you for listening to another impactful podcast episode. Please subscribe and leave a comment and let us know how this episode has impacted you and your business. Your comments are extremely important. It helps to make sure that others can find this information as well. To connect with me and my Retail Boss movement, please go to my website at www.retailbossbiz.com and subscribe to receive periodic updates to learn about my up and coming events and classes. Be sure to follow and subscribe to my Facebook group, Instagram, and YouTube pages. All of my links to my social media platforms can be found in the show notes of this podcast. Until next time, guys, have a blessed day.